Okay, so networking. Um, <clears throat> one of the most common questions when asked about Ethereum is how is it different? Um, how is it different from Bitcoin specifically? Uh, <clears throat> and I think uh, networking is probably one of the areas where Ethereum is significantly different. Um, so, oops, yeah. So, um, networking. Um, what is a network? Uh, everyone here is a network. Um, they say that the way that our brains work is a neural network. So, um, it only makes sense that we created the internet, which is also a network, to connect all of us together. Um, and <clears throat> we've become very dependent on this. Um, our economy functions on networks. Uh, our cell phones function on networks. Our corporations function on networks. Um, and uh, as uh, engineers, we've found ways to, um, to define networking and to define its function and to replicate that and to build on top of that. Um, this is a uh, image of various systems uh, used to power the internet. Um, I'm sure everyone here has heard of ethernet. Um, networking equipment, switching equipment, IT operations. Um, a lot of systems today now run on Ethernet, and that used to not always be the case. Um, one interesting story about Ethernet, though, uh, was that, uh, get a little bit of feedback, is that it used to be a hub broadcast-based system. And what this means is that when one device sends out a packet, it goes to all of the devices. Um, there was no filtering. There was no, um, there, there were no limitations. So if you had a system with 10 devices on it, uh, you'd be fine. If you went to 100 or 1,000 devices, it just wouldn't work because the network would try and deliver every message to everyone uh, for every packet. Um, so to, uh, to resolve that issue, they came up with switched networks. Um, and today we have switch Ethernet. We also have um, another virtual layer of Ethernet called VPN, um, uh, sorry, VLAN. Um, and that is used to uh, further <coughs> allow um, switch networks to uh, filter and route traffic in a way that is, can be optimized for the network that it's built for. Um, so why is that interesting? Um, I think that's interesting because I think today, with Bitcoin and Ethereum, um, we are at that stage. So with, uh, with, with, with Bitcoin and Ethereum and any kind of uh, distributed peer -to most distributed peer-to-peer -peer applications, um, they're broadcast-based. Um, so they're, they're either broadcast-based or they're very um, exclusive in that uh, they, they are broadcast based, but you have like a swarm of peers and they're all, um, uh, they're all concerned with a single torrent hash or something. Um, so uh, as we move forward, like as we define the way that the networking of Bitcoin and Ethereum works, um, we're going to begin uh, addressing scalability. And I think that that's going to look similar to uh, switched, uh, switched networks. Um, IP, of course, um, runs on top of Ethernet. So this is uh, kind of layered. We have uh, physical and then uh, addressability and then application. And it's kind of a generalized uh, stack and layers. Um, and uh, Ethereum is built on a network stack that is very similar to this. Um, so, uh, tell you a little bit about myself um, real quick. 
I've always been into networking, security, um, picked up programming just after high school, um, working at a telecommunications company. Um, and uh, became very interested in the way that networks uh, work. Um, so today, if you were to open your browser, if you were to use your cell phone, if you were to run any kind of application, um, it's probably going to connect with TLS. Um, and this was a case uh, in 2000 with SSL. Um, when I first started getting into networking and, uh, and, and uh, uh, software applications. Um, so uh, TLS was, uh, previously was SSL, um, and its name came from Microsoft agreeing to use a Netscape technology, um, which is great because that's a demonstration of um, two really amazing technology companies coming together to standardize on encryption. Uh, so last week, uh, I talked to one of the um, one of the individuals that uh, worked on TLS um, and started to explain how I felt about the protocol. Um, and he said, yep, uh, completely agree. So when uh, SSL and TLS was created, uh, we did not have some of the strong um, assertions about cryptography that we have today. Uh, and we didn't, we didn't have the same uh, computational power uh, than that we had today as well. So there's general agreement that what we have now can be improved. Um, uh, getting into Ethereum development, um, I started chatting with Gavin you know, early last year and started working on the C++ client. And um, just prior to that, Vitalik had released the white paper. Um, and uh, talking to Gavin, it seemed like uh, we all agreed that um, Ethereum could be a great opportunity to improve networking, to improve the general state of things with regard to encryption. Um, so if we're going to build out a new network for applications, um, for smart contracts, uh, let's see if we can also improve the network. Um, there's an interesting talk by uh, Daniel J. Bernstein um, where he presents himself as an employee of Verizon. Um, and it's great. Uh, if you can find that, it's, 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 a, it's good to watch, especially if you are in, um, if you're in any kind of, uh, if, if you work on a system that is built to exchange information and you are the man in the middle. So if you're a telecommunications provider, if you're a bank, if you um, operate point of sale systems, um, anywhere where you have a massive amount of data going through your system, um, it's good to actually step back and, and realize this um, and realize that if there's a breach, um, you, you, you're, so it's, it, you get a lot of value out of being the man in the middle, um, but if, the, if there's a breach, um, now maybe you're liable. Um, but not only that, uh, maybe uh, as we start building decentralized applications, um, you may be able to offload that to the network um, and both be able to provide value and not have the liability. So um, to provide privacy in, 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 in addition to uh, value. Um, so today, networking principally is based on, um, at a low level, routing information. So IP headers have a source and a destination address. Um, this is really similar to Bitcoin. So Bitcoin, um, Bitcoin has a uh, signer and then it has the destination address and a change address. Um, and this is very similar to forwarding a packet across the internet, except you might split the packet in half. 
And let's not call it a packet, let's call it a payload. Um, and so with, with, with Bitcoin, you've basically got all of these payloads being routed through all of these accounts. Um, and uh, this is very similar to email, except it's secure and there's some value attached to that, tra to that transaction. Um, Ethereum, by the way, we, we actually do this a little differently. Um, the, the way that the signature system works, um, you can look at it similar to Bitcoin, but it's actually quite different. Um, you sign the transaction, um, and the person that wants to verify it, uh, they, they recover your public key out of the transaction and then verify that, that, that that's accurate, and then take the information that's been signed, um, and then process that. Um, so th what's significant there is that it's application-oriented instead of uh, networking. Right. Um, so applications have a different challenge, and that is discovery. Um, if you have a network and you're routing information everywhere, um, this is very useful, uh, but uh, especially if you can decentralize all of it, right? So decentralize all the things, and that's useful. Um, well, actually, it turns out it's not. Um, if you decentralize all the things and you don't know where all the things are, um, your applications can't use the network. So what you have to do when you're building your application is in your application, you have to build something that um, organizes all of the things that you've, you've decentralized. Um, so this is known as routing. There are DHTs. There's a lot of technology um, that can do this in protocols. Um, and what they basically do is they let you determine exactly where the information is that you need um, and then get you that information. Um, and this is, again, becoming very different than networking of the past. Um, with Ethereum, with applications, um, you will connect to your peers and be able to advertise what you need or what you're interested in, and then the network will bring it to you. Um, and this is very useful. Um, and uh, we have to be careful, though. Uh, we have to build this slowly. Um, and we have to do it right, because while it can be really useful and everyone agrees that, um, that we need to improve here, and that this general stack of networking and applications, everything talking to each other, um, we have to be careful that we don't mess it up. Um, so in order to facilitate um, application networks, um, we have a network protocol with Ethereum, uh, for Ethereum nodes, um, which is encrypted throughout the network and has a separate node discovery system. Um, so quick clarification, node can be anything. Um, right now, we have a system for uh, peers, who are the nodes, to form a network to be able to broadcast transactions. Um, and uh, what that gets us today is a stable network for uh, transaction delivery, block delivery, downloads, uh, et cetera. Um, we've recently added uh, framing. We'll be adding flow control soon. Um, and what this means is that you can create a sub-protocol that runs on the Ethereum network. So go ahead and skip that. Um, so we're doing that ourselves. And the, the sub-protocols that we're going to run are um, there's ETH for the blockchain, Whisper, which is, sh and Biz, which is Swarm. Um, you can add your protocol here. And um, each one of these protocols is its own set of nodes. Um, and what this means, at the end of the day, is that Today, everything is a thin client. So 
today everything is HTML. Um, and if we wanted to go into Gmail and say, OK, I want to send email, I want to send Bitcoin to one of my contra uh, contacts, or I want to sign an you know, Ethereum contract, like execute an Ethereum contract with one of my contacts, I can't really do that. Like, there's not an interface in the browser to say, um, OK, uh, execute this function with this uh, application network. Um, and uh, a lot of times, if you want to actually do that, you, you, you have to have a, have a plugin. Um, so what we're going to be building with Ethereum and exposing for your applications um, is the ability for your applications to have networks and have networks of networks, which Bitcoin, the Ethereum blockchain, um, these, are, these are networks. Um, to interface with each other, to pass messages to each other, um, and to communicate uh, in a way that uh, is not previously available. Um, so, and that's it.